What's up, everybody? I'm Marcus. I'm Ryan. And together, we are the, the Northwest, Northwest Sports, Sports Fanatics. Fanatics. Today, we just want to go over the first annual Northwest Sports Fanatics NBA Mark Draft. Now, this is not who your team should select. This is just me and Orion's personal opinion of what teams should do in the lottery. We're just going to go over the first 13 picks. Now, with that being said, Orion, with the first pick in the draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select. Ben McLemore. I know everyone's going to go for New Orleans Noel, and they're going to disagree with me, but this Kansas shooting guard 6'4 is like Dwayne Wade, and it's going to be just like Greg Oden, Kevin Durant. And if you double up at the same position with Deion Waiters already there in Cleveland, that's okay. Ben McLemore can be a great player, and if you pass on him, in my opinion, it's going to be a huge mistake uh, with Cleveland moving forward, obviously, with the team that they have. All right. Well, for me, I would go New Orleans Noel, you know, the big man out of Kentucky. Uh, he's an elite defender. He averaged four blocks a game last year before he got injured with the ACL. You know, there's going to be a lot of questions and concerns about that. But he does run the court well, and he finishes with either hand as well. Now, with that being said, let's move to the next pick, the Orlando Magic. Who do they select, all right? Uh, for me, I'll go Trey Burke. Um, I think they need a point guard. Jameer Nelson's getting a little bit older. I think he'd be a great fit. Uh, he's Michigan point guard, 6'1". He's got leadership. He's got toughness. When I look at him, I see a future all-star like Chris Paul. Uh, and I think that with that team, it could give the Magic some swagger back. So there's one team other than the Miami Heat in Florida that could actually bring some hype and excitement to the state of Florida. All right. And uh, with me, I'm going to go Ben McLemore, you know, the 6'5 shooting guard from Kansas. Um, great freshman. His athleticism is elite. Uh, he got that Ray Allen stroke out there from the three-point line. He thrives in transition, good elevation on his shot, and he also finishes well, uh, moves well without the ball. And um, to me, he's going to be the top scorer in this draft. Now, with the third pick in the NBA draft, Orion, who does the Washington Wizards select? They're going to go for the hometown kid, Otto Porter. I really like his game. You already got John Wall, Bradley Beal. Um, you got Okafor, and you got Nene. So the, that piece that's missing, it's him. To me, I see Jeff Green. Um, not a great player, but a good player. Does everything well, and I think he'd fit in really well with that team. 6'8", um, great size, and I think he'd be a great addition to the Wiz. Well, you know me, I'm a hometown guy, so my whiz, I, I'm going with Otto Porter as well. Um, with Otto, you know, he has great size and length for your typical small forward. Uh, his basketball IQ is, is very high. Um, he has a great wingspan. He shot over 42% from the three-point range. Um, he does everything good. He doesn't have one great thing that he does, but he does everything good. And with Wall, Bill, and Otto Porter... Ain't no stopping the Wizards in the future. Now, with the fourth pick in the NBA draft, the Bobcats select. For me, Michael Jordan obviously is the greatest player of all time, but he does have some questionable selections in the draft. So at this point, I'm going to go near Lens Noel. You know, if I'm already going to have him slide in the draft, he sometimes makes mistakes in who he picks. Um, he's a great player. Uh, he's coming off the surgery off his knee, but I think at that point, if he's going to slide to that position, um, that could help him be maybe a Marcus Canby clone. Will he pan out? Maybe, maybe not. But I think you can't really go wrong if he's at that position at the number four. You have to pick him. All right. For me, with the number four pick, I select Alex Lynn for the Charlotte Bobcats there. You know, he has great defensive potential, um, a great offensive skill set, great footwork for a big man. He can finish with either hand. Um, major upside to me, um, above average athlete for, for a man that size. And uh, he also shoots 65% at the rim. So when he get down there down low, he's, he's almost automatic. Um, now with the fifth pick in the draft, the Phoenix Suns select. For me, I go Anthony Bennett. I really like this player, UNLV, power forward. Um, he's a little undersized at a power forward position, but he can play small or power. And whenever I look at him and I look at old tape, Larry Johnson, Mr. LJ. Yes. That's yes. what I look at. I see um, he is coming off a little bit of a sh shoulder surgery, but I think that once he recoups and gets healthy, he could really take that team to the next level in a couple years that you know, they maybe be able to be a playoff team. All right, for me, um, for the Phoenix Suns, I'm going Victor Oladipo. You know, the 6'5", shooting guard out of Indiana. Um, I compare him to D-Wade. His, his body is thick. He's, he's nice. Um, he's defensive first right now. He is a, a efficient offen, offensive player. He's improving his shooting. Great in transition. I think he needs to improve his ball handling a little bit. But he, he's too explosive of, of an athlete. And uh, I think he'll be a great fit down there in Phoenix. 
Now, with the number six pick, the New Orleans Hornets select. And I'm going to go the opposite way that you went. I'm going to go Victor Oladipo at this pick. Um, like I said, he's from Indiana. He's a shooting guard, 6'5", 210. He's got good size. To me, the best defender in the draft, probably in the last two drafts that we've seen hands down, yes. uh, besides Anthony Davis at the center position. I really like his game. He reminds me of Bruce Bowen based on his defensive ability, not the based on way he plays, but uh, defensive ability only. And I think that his offensive game is deceptively good. You, when you look at him, you think defensive first, but I think when people see him on the court, he's going to show people really what he has on both sides of the floor. Yeah, for me, um, with that pick, I'm going Anthony Bennett. You know, the big man, small four, power four out of UNLV, 6'7", 239, uh, 18 points a game last year, uh, elite athlete, he has great length, he's versatile, he can play inside and out, uh, he crashes the offensive boards hard, uh, he has good upside and potential, to me he reminds me of a, a, a Larry Johnson, LJ, mm -hmm. but he's a, a little more athletic and uh, he got a good stroke for a bit man from the three point arc. Now, with the number seven pick, the Sacramento Kings select. I would pick C.J. McCollum. To me, this is the steal in the draft. This was like Damian Lillard last year for the Portland Trailblazers. This guy can play point guard or shooting guard. He's 6'3", he's 190, the best scorer in the draft besides Macklemore. Um, like I said, I see Lillard and Roy kind of comparisons with him, kind of combined together. Um, but I, like I said, I like his, his skill set on both sides of the ball, and he's from Lehigh. I mean, how many players do you know out of Lehigh are going in the first round? But that's what they say about uh, Lillard going from Weber State. So look out for him. He is going to be the steal in this draft. All right. With me, I'm going to go Trey Burke for the Sacramento Kings. They finally get their point guard. You know, they pick uh, Isaiah Thomas and Jimmer for dead and the Tyreek Evans at point guard didn't kind of work out. Um, Trey Burke is going to give him a scoring point guard or he can be a, a setup point guard as well. So he's the jack of both trades. Um, he got good length, 6'5", wingspan. Uh, he gives you that leadership. Um, what separates him from the pack is that he can shoot it from deep or he can get to the rack and he can finish. Elite ball handling, and he has the best change of speed dribble that I've seen in this draft coming up so far. Um, now, the next pick, the Detroit Pinces with the number eight pick. Who do you think they're going to select? Uh, I think they're going to go, for me personally, I'd go Michael Carter Williams because I know they're looking for a guard, either point guard or shooting guard. They got Stucky. They have some players there already. This guy's tall. He's a 6'5 point guard, so he's a little bit taller than the average point guard there, but he is skinny. He's got a wiry frame, 175. Definitely needs to lift the weights a little bit, gain maybe about 10 or 15 more pounds. Um, he can't really shoot well. But he does have good handles, you know, with the ball. Uh, and his size, that's what's going to be the key for the Pistons. His size, maybe posting up on the littler point guards, that might be the key for their team moving forward with Stucky. All right, with me for that pick, I pick Shabazz Muhammad. You know, he's the silky smooth lefty, James Harden clone kind of without the beard. Uh, he got a nice stroke. He's very crafty. And I think he'll fit nice right there with Brandon Knight, Greg Monroe, and Andre Drummond as a nice little nucleus for the Pistons to build for the future. Now, with the number nine pick, the Minnesota Timberwolves select. For me, I would go Kentavious Caldwell Pope. Not a lot of people know about this name. He's from Georgia. He's a shooting guard, 6'5", 205. Um, that's going to fill a need, so Rubio has someone he can go to. They tried the Brandon Roy experiment. The knees couldn't really hold up, so I'm thinking this would be a great player to add to their team. They already have a few pieces there. Kevin Love's coming off the injury, but if they add another score to their team, that could make that trio of Rubio, Caldwell Pope, or, uh, and obviously Love something to look forward to as we move it on in the future. Yeah, with me, you know, that pick, I did go C.J. McCullough. You know, I, I have him rated a little higher than Caldwell Pope. Um, he is the second best scorer in this draft. Uh, good leadership. He rebounds well. He averaged 23 points a game before he, he, he got injured for the season with a foot injury. Um, he moves well without the ball. Great hesitation and crossover. And he has a, a great stroke as well. Now, with the number 10 pick in the draft, our Portland Trail Blazers, we select. For me, I personally, if I could have the pick, I would want Oladipo, but he's already going to be picked. So I'm going to have to go Cody Zeller. Uh, Indiana, um, you know, you're going for the other guy that's at Indiana. He can play power forward or center. Yes, we have Myers Leonard. J.J. Hickson might be out. Um, you know, obviously, LaMarcus Aldridge is getting a little bit older, but I like this guy. I think he's the best center in the draft. He's got the best footwork. He can shoot right-handed or left-handed, and I think with Myers Leonard and with Cody Zeller, they might have the two best up-and-coming 
power forward center big man in the league as we move forward for potential to grow to a team that obviously needs a playoff berth. Yeah, that would be a nice combo there. But with me, I think we need to go shooting guard small forward. So I, I choose uh, Catavius Caldwell Pope out of Georgia. Uh, 6'6 sophomore shooting guard. Uh, he has great speed and he can finish. Nice NBA body. Uh, athletic shooter. Uh, he has great potential. He's a good rebound. And um, he would be awesome. Uh, I think a definitely upgrade to uh, Wesley Matthews there. Now, with the 11th pick, the 76ers select. For me, I would go Alex Len. Most people have him going in the top six. But for me, if he slides a little bit, he's from Maryland. He's a center. He's 7-1. He's 255. It makes sense to me because Bynum. You pick Bynum up. He got injured. I think he'd be a perfect fit for the Sixers. They would really love him. Um, like I said, it would be a nice replacement for Bynum. And I think, like I said, those fans there, they're looking for that player. They're looking for that stud since Allen Iverson has left. And hasn't. they haven't really had a star player since Iguodala. So I'm thinking that would be someone that they could grow with as we move forward. Yeah, that's a nice pick. Um, with me, uh, you know, I have Cody Zeller sliding down a, a little bit in my draft. So I'm going to go... 76 is Cody Zeller. Uh, we do agree he has the best footwork out of any of the big men here in this draft. Uh, he has good touch, uh, nice inside game. Uh, he can face up as well. Great athlete, 37-inch vertical, and he's going to come in and he's going to compete. Now, with the 12th pick, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they select? I would go Steven Adams. Not very many people know of this name. Uh, he's from Pittsburgh. He's a center. He's 6'11". He's 235. And he's going to be a Kendrick Perkins replacement. But the good thing about him is with Serge Ibaka, and I think with Nick Collison, they can mentor this, this young gentleman here. He obviously is from New Zealand, so he's a little bit uh, new to the NBA style. But I think they need size, and that was a, a, a big weakness for them, obviously, with the Russell you know, Westbrook injury. But I think with him, they could kind of mentor him and show him how the NBA game is. And then that could obviously help him as Kendrick Perkins gets ready to retire here in the next couple years. Yeah, I do agree with you on the Steven Adams pick. Um, he is a, a legit seven-footer with a high motor, hard worker. Um, he needs to work on his offensive game, which I think will come with experience. And uh, he'll, he'll give them a little more depth behind Kendrick Perkins, who, who maybe is on his way out. And um, our last pick of this Northwest Sports Fanatics mock drive, the Dallas Mavericks, they select. For me, I go Shabazz Muhammad. I know Marcus went a little bit higher with the draft pick, but I do like him there. Uh, UCLA shooting guard, 6'6", 225. Um, he is a James Harden clone. Maybe not the 45-point James Harden we know in Houston, but maybe mm -hmm. the one we saw the first couple of years in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. uh, no beard, but he has a great game. He's left-handed, so they have something in common there. He runs the floor very well like James Harden, uh, James Harden does as well. Um, like he's got good size. He's athletic. And I think this guy has probably the top three out of the top 13 uh, room to improve. His ceiling is very, very high, and I think if he gets with the right team, like the Mavericks, it could be a great O.J. Mayo replacement, and I think it's a good fit. All right, with me for the 13th pick uh, for the Dallas Mavericks, I went with Michael Carter-Williams, uh, the point guard um, out of Syracuse. He has great size for his position, you know, at 6'6". Um, he's an excellent passer, good court vision. Um, he's an active defender because of his length, so he's going to get in the passing lanes, get him some steals. Uh, but he does need to work on his jumper, and uh, I think he's going to have a little problem with turnovers here uh, in the NBA. Now, that's our Northwest Sports Fanatics first annual NBA mock draft. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you can follow me at on Twitter, at Marcus Hill underscore NWSF. And Orion underscore NWSF. I uh, want to give a shout out to Banner Bob for the banner back there in the background at Sign Shack. Y'all go check him out, signshack.com. And we want to make sure we thank our Facebook sponsors. We really appreciate all the love that we're getting and sponsorship. All right. Thank you guys for all your love and support. And we'll be right back at you soon later on this week with a brand new recording. Northwest Sports, Sports Fanatics. Fanatics.